Hello and welcome again. Uh, I think it's time we talk about an introduction to modern cryptography. So basically what I'm going to do in this video is discuss very, very general ideas on the modern cryptography. So what we act people actually use today. Now, um, to do that, uh, before we go do that, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the historical ciphers. So basically, what those are, these are all ciphers that probably nobody uses today for any seri serious encryption. And so we talked about this one. We talked about the Caesar cipher or the shift cipher. Uh, we also talked about the substitution cipher. And we also talked about the permutation cipher and two cases of that permutation, which was the rail fence cipher and the columnar, columnar transposition cipher. So these are all the ciphers we cover so far. Um, let's call that uh, three ciphers, basically. Now we could spend uh, the rest of this course talking about historical ciphers. So ciphers that basically work on letters and I'll explain that in uh, better a little bit. So there are a lot more of those. So for example, the ones that you see there in color, this is a cipher that we didn't discuss in this course and we're not gonna do it. And also one that is very interesting uh, is the German Enigma machine, which was a machine that was used in the uh, war to encrypt messages and the Germans used it during that period. And there are many, many, many more ciphers that are called historical ciphers. So again, as I said, we could spend the rest of the class doing that, but these are not the ciphers people actually use today. Now, uh, one of the characteristics, and this is very important, of these uh, historical ciphers is that they work, they all operate on letters. Now, that's what we actually did. For the Caesar ciphers, we have a message and it was letters. We encrypt it using a shift and then we get another uh, text that we call the cipher text. Same thing for the substitution cipher, it was done on letters. And same thing for the permutation in the two cases of the rel and the columnar transposition. And the other ones are like that too. Uh, this cipher here, the Enigma machine, and all of the other ones, all pretty much all of the other historical ciphers will work on letters. But that's not enough. So why is this not enough? The reason in the, the thing is today, I mean, this work very well in these old ciphers, they work well, um, because there was an application for them, usually then in that period of time where there were no computers, the, the communication was done usually by paper, then it made sense to use a uh, cipher that work on letters. This is usually for war purposes or espionage or whatever have you, you wanna uh, use it. But today we are in the uh, time of computers, so we need to do something else here. And that's what I mean by this, why this is not enough today. And what is not, the reason it's not enough today is because we have, have data, data that is not text some data that is not text that we will be interested in encrypting for several reasons. And I think there was a video posted uh, that talked about this introduction. So one of the things that you uh, probably, maybe some of you might know is, uh, when if you have a cell phone, you already have an encryption machine. So when you have, a, when you're a part of a cellular network, and for example, AT&T and T-Mobile have this cellular network, the GSM, uh, you don't actually have to know what that means. It's just a protocol that they use to communicate, uh, to send uh, the data on the cellular network. Now, a cellular network works pretty much like a Wi-Fi, not exactly, but pretty much like the Wi-Fi. And there is an encryption algorithm, but at least one of them, they use many, that is called the A5-1. Uh, this is kind of like an stream cipher, and we'll talk about this cipher later. But the idea here is that if you already have a cell phone, you have an encryption machine already, even if you don't know it. So what happens is, uh, and I'm oversimplifying here, really oversimplifying, is that when you when you talk on the phone, what happens is that voice is uh, translated basically into zeros and ones, into binary, and then that data is then transmitted somewhere to a tower. Uh, Pretty bad drawing. There's a tower here that is gonna 
take your data and then distribute that data to the network to the person you're calling or texting or sending the pictures. So basically what I'm saying here is you already have an encryption algorithm there if you already have a cell phone. So it uses a network that is called a GSM, whatever, doesn't matter. And it has an encryption algorithm that actually uses there to encrypt your voice. So that's used in the modern life. So, and of course these things can be cracked as well and we probably won't talk about this specific cipher, but in general, what this stream cipher is. Another example that was also talked over uh, some other video was encryption of the internet. So one of the things that uh, you actually, or some of you might do is you buy things online. So you visit an online store and then if you look at the corner here, that is a uh, HTTPS, when you see that, and you see that uh, lock there, it means that you're using encryption to communicate with that website and uses SSL. Uh, and we might talk about that in the class, but for now it's just, it's just a protocol uh, that's called secure socket layer. Now, that's a way, so one page, you can communicate from you to the server where you are uh, uh, trying to communicate, which is in this case, this is, for example, my account in Amazon. And you can see I have a secure connection and you want to have that because uh, your credit card information is there and you don't want anyone to be looking at, at that information. So we use uh, uh, encryption over the internet. And of course, all, all that encryption is data. So it's not text, it's, it's data again. So, uh, so that's why it's important. So encryption algorithms will work on data uh, in the modern life. So check an email, of course, when you check your email, maybe Gmail, Hotmail, um, Yahoo Mail, whatever you want, they will also use encryption to make that connection between you, your web browser, and the server that they have. And of course, if you check your bank or credit card account, they will also use that uh, connection, so they will have to encrypt the data, of course, because the bank or the credit card, the one who exposed that to the all public, just to you. So they have to encrypt it. So that's two examples there, cellular phones and also on the internet. Um, and all of that is about data. Now you also have possibility of encrypting only only in your computer. So if you wanna just computer, don't you don't have connection to the internet or you don't, you're not connected, it's not necessary. Uh, one, this is a three ways so you can encrypt uh, in your computer. When you type a password to get into your account, and I hope you do have a password to get into your computer, uh, the computer is gonna store that password using an encryption algorithm that is called hashing. We might talk about this later in, in the class. So this is an encryption algorithm that takes a password, and before the actual computer stores that powers, password to double check that you are actually the person who is logging in on your computer, it's gonna apply a hashing algorithm to store that password. Of course, and there is software that you can use to encrypt files and hard drives. I think I mentioned TrueCrypt, which is already uh, not, uh, it's done, it's not working. It's, it's working, but it was abandoned. The, the project was abandoned uh, a while ago. So, so all this comes to the following thing. So we want to encrypt data, which is uh, not only text, so maybe you have files, pictures, uh, Word documents, uh, you also have uh, music, movies, whatever you want, and maybe for one reason or another you want to encrypt it, or you might want to encrypt your whole hard drive uh, for whatever reason. Maybe your company uh, has important data on that laptop or desktop, and then you don't have, you want to take the risk of somebody looking at that data if, if they uh, have a hole on your machine. So data is an important part here. So the modern cryptography will encrypt data instead of encrypting uh, test, uh, text. So how is data represented? So not data is represented usually because we are using now computers. It can be represented by numbers, which is usually binary. So binary numbers, binary base. So zeros and ones basically. Now, letters and symbols, or symbols, the ones we use for encryption, like the scissor cipher, substitution, or the other ones, uh, are also represented by numbers, and there are standard ways in which you can do that. 
Now, uh, this is important because if you want to communicate between two computers, there must be some kind of agreement on what letter represents what number. Because every if everybody is allowed to use whatever they want, then it will be a whole mess. Um, so now, if you probably heard of that before, we had the ASCII code, which is basically uh, how do you represent letters in the English alphabet uh, to numbers. And of course, that ASCII code only was used for the English speaking language. Of course, there are some other languages in all in the world. So there was a need to do something about that. And so the Unicode, Unicode came about. And we might talk about this maybe later. But basically what it is, is you want to uh, assign numbers to uh, all the possible symbols that are uh, in all the languages in the world. Okay, so this is all an ongoing project. This is not finished. Uh, this is still going on. And of course, I'm oversimplifying here again because uh, what the Unicode is is a much complicated thing. It's a lot more complicated than the ASCII code. Um, so you can also represent letters and symbols as numbers. And so all the encryption algorithms, what they're going to do is they're going to encrypt numbers because uh, all the data can be represented as numbers. So numbers will be the thing that we're going to re uh, encrypt. And usually what we're going to do is we're going to encrypt uh, in binary. So we take a binary number and we're going to uh, get a binary number. So the plain text in that case will be a binary and the cipher text will also be a binary, whatever that number represents in the computer, maybe a letter, maybe it represents a file, a picture, uh, a Word document, whatever you want. And so um, I just want to uh, show you what's the ASCII code here because it's very simple. I cannot show you a, a actual table of the Unicode because the Unicode uh, actually has like over 100,000 uh, symbols. So it's not possible for me to show you here. Uh, the Unicode actually contains the ASCII code also. So it's actually in the ASCII code is in, in some sense embedded in the Unicode. So the Unicode is kind of like universal standard. All right, so if you, you probably have seen this before, this uh, chart here. So uh, it's a long chart, so I'll, I'll explain a little bit of what that means. So there are three, there are uh, here, there's columns. The first column is the decimal representation of the number of the uh, character or the control sequence. And this one is the hexadecimal. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, it doesn't matter. Uh, and this is the other representation in octadecimal. Uh, and this is the actual thing that is being represented. Now, this fir first 32 things that are here are control sequences. Basically, that tells, for example, uh, shift out, and this is a blank space, stuff like that. Uh, after that, after the 32, you get with the actual characters here. So this is all actual characters. For example, here you have the uh, percentage, parentheses, and so on, and the letters that they are here in this column. So this is the letter A that you see here, and is represented in decimal by the number 65. So uh, uppercase B will represent it by 66 and so on. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to think about everything as a number from now on. Letters are going to be numbers, data, whatever that data is, a picture, a file, a whole hard drive. So we're going to think about that as a number. So all the encryption algorithms that we're going to see from now on will work on numbers. And as you might guess, because we're going to work with numbers, we're going to have to use some mathematics to do that encryption. So it's not going to be as it was a simple, uh, let me scroll all the way uh, up here. I hope, you, I hope you don't get dizzy here by this. Uh, with the Caesar cipher and substitution cipher, I try to avoid as much as possible to introduce any math in any of this, but you cannot hold it anymore because we, if you have to get serious about uh, crypt cryptography, we need to use some mathematics. Now we did some mathematics here with the division algorithm, but that was just like an introduction. If we're gonna get serious with this, with cryptography, We'll have to do a little bit of mathematics. So some of the uh, next videos, some of them might be actual cryptography where we're going to talk about the algorithms. And some of them uh, might be just pure math. So concepts of mathematics that we actually need to do or to implement those algorithms. 
So that's a kind of like an introduction to modern cryptography. If you have to take something from here, basically what it is is we're gonna, we're gonna encrypt numbers. So that's what we're gonna do. Instead of letters, we're gonna encrypt numbers. And the reason for that is because every piece of data is represented as a number. So I will see you in the next video and we'll talk about a little bit more about this uh, modern cryptography.